So the first thing we're going to do is just sever the PDL and separate that a little bit for him. Okay. And as we talked about, Kevin, pressure is normal, pain is not. So if you have any pain, you let me know, okay? And you can see just really how quickly, I mean, my goal is not to reflect it flat, but you see just by severing the PDL that's happening because the gums are not the healthiest here. Good. If you open, please, I'm going to do the back now. And so we did give them infiltration in the buccal vestibule, and then we also went ahead and gave them an incisive block there. Good. So, so far so good, right? So now we're going to go with the wedge, as we talked about. So remember, you don't want to go in sideways like this. We want to go in at a 10 or 15 degree angle. Okay, so if you take a look, I'm just going in and I'm just going to rotate a little bit. Okay, everybody see that? And then I'm going to do the same in this direction. Because these are pretty decayed, it, it's sort of mush in there, but we're just going through the movement. So, but you can see how, let me show you real quick. You can see how this goes and stays. That's the beauty of the wedge. It's sort of a knife edge. It's still got its strength, unlike a peritone. And unlike an elevator, it's not that curved that it won't fit in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in there and turn a little. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here with the lateral. Behind you. Thank you. Good. Boy, what a great patient. You're doing awesome, Kevin. So here you can see already, see the composite breaking off, just right on his tongue there. Thank you. Now, if we see when we put the physics forcep on there and it just keeps going through all that decay, what would you suggest I do? Yep, make the C on the lingual, correct? Good. So right now we're going to just try to see if we can get anything on there. Let's see if this uh, optergate fits them, that way everybody can see. I'm just going to try and put this device in there. It just stretches your lips. Let's see if this works. putting a washer in your mouth, right? Okay. Everybody see a little better there? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's just go now from the lingual real quick. If you open it. Good. See if we can get some movement. Same here. Everybody see the force that I'm using? Everybody see the force? Again, severing the PDL and then just trying to get some movement. So if you take a look at number seven, I already see movement on it. If you take a look in the, um, in the video, look, just me turning it. Everybody see that? So if that's happening just like that, I don't even have to go to the physics. I can go straight to this. When you take this out, I don't recommend going buccalingual, buccalingual. What I recommend is you can push apical, it expands the socket, and then twist. And you're going to find it's going to twist in a direction where it comes out really easy. Everybody see that? All right. So let's take a look at the physics forcep. Normally this has a green bumper. They just made a bunch of extras for the demo in white, so not a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to position that right up here, put the beak on solid two structure, the bumper as high up into the vestibule as possible. Notice for a big guy, he's got a very shallow vestibule. So the ratio here of the fulcrum is not the most ideal. However, we're gonna make the best of it, okay? So if you notice, I'm not squeezing any more than this. This is just to grab onto the tube, okay? So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead 
and rotate a little bit. And we let our patient know he's going to feel a little pressure here. And then eventually this tooth is sort of going to give. You feel a little pressure there, Kevin? No. No? Okay, even better. Everybody see the movement right there? So I'm not going to go more than 20 degrees. It's loose. I'm just going to go straight back to my 150. You can also use the tooth delivery. And remember, I'm not going to go buccal lingua. I don't want to break the buccal plate. I'm an implant guy. I want to preserve as much bone as possible. So I'm just going to twist. Notice? And I'm not pressing hard. Everybody see that? All right, so we're just going to keep moving around. I'm going to go to this side. Same thing. Make sure I'm parallel to the long axis of the tooth. And put a little pressure. Reposition to make sure I stay parallel to the tooth. And then I'm just going to keep that at the 10 and 15 degree to let the pressure build up. We don't want to do this, right? We want constant pressure. And so now I'm just going to take it just another five degree. And I can feel it, I can feel it give. So now we'll go back to our forceps. Again, I want to make sure I grab it on solid two structure so I don't just break the coronal portion off. Here we go. And now we're just going to do a twist. Yes, a lot of mush in that too. So it's not as loose, so we're just going to go back to the physics. We just fix this thing under your lip, buddy. There we go. So we're just going to go here. Again, not a very big vestibule here. Make sure we're on the long axis. And go ahead and put a little pressure. There we go. I saw it move. Okay. A lot of this is just by feel, right? This is the tooth delivery, by the way. So I can use this even. So you can see it's a good size too. Perry Donnelly, his teeth are like pretty solid actually. These are coming out because of the decay, not because of the uh, Perry Donnelly things necessarily. All right, so number 10 looks like it's broken off at the gum line. The lower of your dam came out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I know I'm not a big fan of the Optra gates because of that reason. I, uh, in my practice, use the metal retractors, you know, that the surgeons use. That keeps them out much better. Okay, same thing. Get a little bit of leverage. Does everybody see how I'm using two hands? Good. We're going to go ahead and grab that and rotate. And we're just going to do the twist. Grab on the solid tooth, obviously. And we got it out. Uh, the canine, remember, it angles distally. So I don't want to have this on the wrong long axis. I want to make sure I follow the correct long axis. So we're going to go right here and do the same thing and sort of give it a little twist. And we're just going to hold it there. See how I'm using two hands? But look, this is not squeezing hard. Everybody wants to squeeze hard, you're going to break it. So we're just going to go and go another five degree. Everybody see the movement there? Yep. You're not going to keep going. I let go. And now I'm just going to go to the regular forcep. If you open just a little bit, Kevin. And then, like I said, you can push up a little bit and then rotate and you're going to find it's going to want to come in and out at the proper orientation look at the curvature on that roof okay usually you could break that but utilizing the physics forceps 
getting it to loosen first really makes it a better situation. Okay, last tooth for me, Kevin, and then we'll get one of the docs to do the rest. So if you take a look, let me go on this side so you can see. Let me just fix this light here. There we go. And so what you see is that it's following the long axis. If I have to move over here so I can see it correctly, I'd recommend that in your practice. Because when you're going in this direction, you may not know, and this is an awkward movement to do with your wrist. Everybody see that? So we're just going to go like this. Again, I'm not squeezing hard, and I'm just going to go towards the long axis. The, the great thing is, you all heard Kevin say his first um, experiences with extractions before us was not very good. I mean, if you look at his expressions, it doesn't look like he's feeling anything but just pressure. Would you agree, Kevin? Yeah. So far, so good? Yeah. I get an A or A minus? A. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. So now we're just going to do our rotation like we talked about. You could push in a little bit just to expand that and then just keep rotating. I don't like to go buccalingual and break the bone. Just rotate within its socket. And what you're going to do is you're going to find it comes out in one direction. So one way that you twist it, that's the way it's going to want to come out. So I'm just going slow here. You can see all the decay in that tooth. Just section that piece there if you don't mind. Thank you. So everybody can see the size of this root here. Okay? Now, we talked about this. We want to cure at the socket. Okay? And notice I'm pushing on the facial. It's not going through. Pushing on the facial. It's not going through. So all the thin buckle plate is still there. Okay? Same here, same here. So, one of the things you could do, again, you're not going to use up all the grafting on one patient. I just recommend doing one or two. One of the things is using the osteogen. So notice what I'm doing with the bullet shape of the osteogen. I'm making it like this. Now this obviously is too big for even a central. So what I'll do is I'll cut it in half. If you're going to cut it, you may want to flatten it a little bit more. So we're just going to cut this all the way. So what we're doing, Kevin, I'm giving you a little bone grafting, buddy, okay? Get a bonus today. So let's just say we're going to take the smaller piece and put it here where the lateral was. And the larger piece and put it in the central. Okay? So can you, can you open up a little bit more? Open just a little, thank you. So I like to use my finger first and then we'll go ahead from the grafting kit and use the plugger. And you can see it's already starting to turn pink and nice there. So let's say we do that for those. And the other one, we're going to go ahead and open the BioViva. Remember, if you touch this wet, it's going to stick to everything. There's two slices in each one. So what I like to do is just take one at a time. And then roll it. Okay. Roll it like this. And then we can put it right into the socket, okay? So even though it looks like gauze, it's not. It's cellulose with a hemostatic agent in it. This totally dissolves, but it um, controls the bleeding very well. So we're going to do it again for this one. It's going to open up a little bit, please. You're almost done, Kevin. He's getting tired. Okay, good, and let's just uh, open this other one and do his canines just to take care of that for him. So we'll put one in each canine, and then I'm going to suture him up. Any questions so far?
everybody saw it was you don't have to use brute force, it's all in the technique. And you saw his, uh, his bone and gums, well the gums were bleeding, but it wasn't like these were periodontally involved. And they were good sized roots. Good. And we're just going to go like this. Okay. So you can already see how nice that's looking there. Uh, open again, please. Yeah, you can see how nice that's looking. So I don't know if you guys want to watch me stitch. I don't think you need to. I would say let's get started since we got a little bit of a later start. Um, and then. Whoever you saw, Kevin's a great patient. One or two of you can come in here and take over um, after I suture and take care. Do you want? Do you want more out? 